Nolan Ryan here. Welcome to the main part of my living room. There's geese honking in the background and probably going to be some leaf blowers and weed eaters because they're working on yard maintenance and all that outside. But um, today I got a new toy and I hate unboxing videos as I've said before, but I thought I would uh, record this nonetheless mostly for insurance for myself just to make sure everything's in working order and uh, it looks the same when I open it up and all that, but um, I guess for some hype building as well because this is a really cool piece of gear that um, it's one of those things that I don't particularly need, especially with all the other uh, pieces of equipment that I have. They can get very similar sounds, if not dead on sounds, what this can do, but it's one of those things that I told myself if I ever see it under a certain um, price range, this or something like it, that um, it would be worth it for me, and uh, I finally found one. Good lord, this thing is packed uh, very well. I'll, I'll give the seller that, so thanks for that. Um, he also shipped some of the more fragile parts in separate packaging, which is very nice of him. And I don't even know how to go about that side, to tell you the truth. I think I'm just gonna, just gonna marauder the box, why not? That's right, ladies and gentlemen, I got Another box. This is actually Nintendo Labo. This is the special edition. All right, I'm gonna go for gold. I'm gonna do it. Uh, yes. Oh, that's a lot of styrofoam. I'm gonna clean that off. Uh, well, you can see what it is. Okay, it's a little better. I'm gonna be picking up styrofoam for like the next 10 days probably, but whatever. Um, so if you're halfway familiar with this line of amps, you probably already know what it is. This is a Mesa Boogie Mark IV. Um, as a lot of you probably know I'm a huge fan of the Mark series. Of course, everyone loves the Mark II C+. It's like just the golden 80s um, metal amp, and it still is very serviceable today. Of course, they're super incredibly hard to get a hold of, and when you do find a legitimate one, they cost a lot of money. Um, and of course, the Mark III, I love every one of those. And the Mark IV was kind of the first um, just like get them all in one box. Uh, the Tri-Axis does something very similar, but it's only a preamp. And then the Mark V is the modern take on this. It has a lot more voicing options, that kind of stuff. But the Mark IV, for its time, was insane. And um, there's a few versions of the Mark IV. This one, for me, was like the, the sweet spot for value because I've always wanted a Mark Series amp. I just didn't want to pay what they cost new. Um, the Mark V 25 was one that I'd loved. I still love to have that. It's, just, it's like this big um, lunchbox size but they're like 1500 bucks new, and I managed to grab this um, significantly under $1,000, and that was kind of my threshold if I found one for around that price um, that had the feature set I wanted. I was like, yeah, that's that's worth it to me um, because they do keep their value a little bit uh, better as well. There's a few things I particularly uh, appreciate from this reverb seller. as the original manual, which is pretty cool. Um, also, he packed the power tube separately, which is very nice because, you know, do kind of worry about those kind of things when you ship. I've never had a problem with it personally, uh, but still. And look at that, a long power cord. I, I can't tell you how many times I've ordered used electronics and it's just like, nah, you don't need the power cord. It's fine. Everyone just has, you know, hundreds of those that are appropriate to fly around. Go in shaky cam mode here for a second, but look how much shit is on the back. I don't even think the Mark V has that many switches and outputs and all that good stuff. One cool thing about this though, stereo effects loops. That'll be real fun hooking this up uh, in stereo to my cabinet. Most time we gotta do that with like dual heads. Um, but I'm gonna have to get a foot switch for this because that's, that's a little insane. At least I have that knob there. Uh, you got different power amp options with the Simo Class and Class A, uh, Pinto Triode, all that good stuff. It'll change the output wattage. That output transformer looks like it's seen some better days. Um, and seller did say the pre the preamp tubes could probably use changing. The power amps look pretty good, but uh, if I change these, I'm gonna change them out of all my amps at some point. So yeah, just fire it up. See what it sounds like. Everything looks good. Fired right up. Um, we'll save the good quality production for later because right now I'm just gonna. Just gonna kind of wing it here. I got uh, running through my two notes torpedo captor load box and then that out to the V30. So hopefully we'll be able to get some pretty good sounds out of it. 
tell you the first thing I want to try to dial in, and obviously this is not going to be perfect at all because I'm going through V30s, not a Marshall cabinet, but um, should still get the same vibe, I imagine. So what made me fall in love with boogies before I even know, knew what they were was um, really Injustice for All. I love Master of Puppets tone as well, but um, Injustice for All was what made me like really want to get into metal production and all that kind of stuff. Um, of course, a lot of that has to do with the micing of the cabinet and all that, but being able to plug straight into an amp like this and get the sounds that they did was just freaking insane. So I guess we'll uh, we'll start dialing. You know what, let's make this real fun. So just, just to see how close the real thing in the model are, at least the, the fractal model, I'm gonna try dialing it in halfway how I know <laughs> boogies dial in. So I'm not gonna start over here. I'm actually gonna start on the EQ slider. So what's funny about uh, Mark series amps is all of this is pre-gain stage. So like you're actually EQing the guitar before it goes to the, to the amp, which is why a lot of people find these hard to dial in, but there's really one trick for metal. Do that. <laughs> uh, you want the mids just squashed. I'm gonna put them up a little bit. I'm also gonna tank the 2200 a little bit, and we're gonna do a pretty nice boost to 80 hertz. Um, depending on my power setup, we may want to pull that out, um, but it should be okay. Lead gain, uh, let's keep that about eight because there's another gain over here. I want to say, yeah, pull bright on masters. We definitely want to pull bright. Let's pull shift for presence control. I don't think we need shift. Um, well, it says pull bright. Oh, that's pull bright. Um, so yeah, lead drive, we'll have that up. We want mids, not super high, like most of the time on normal metal guitars, you'd want to crank that pretty high, but for Hetfield, not really. Bass, like almost nothing. Um, and then treble, you want like cranked. That should be close. Um, and then output, I don't know how loud this is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty Metallica. Nice. All right. Well, let's um. Okay, we got to pull fat. Yeah, we don't want that from Metallica. I love that. So that's um, just the clean channel rhythm one. The EQ is bypassed completely, which means really you're just sculpting the guitar, adding some tube drive to it and putting it through a speaker. You can't get much more pure than that. Sounds great. The reverb tank on this thing is pretty dead though. Um, I turned it up to max. I didn't hear anything and the seller did say I might have to replace that. I don't particularly give a shit uh, because I run digital reverbs and anything I use will probably be um, off of that anyway, so not a bad deal for me. So there's like a hundred tube amps on my wish list, right? I mean, everyone has the ones that are like, yeah, I want, would love to have this piece of gear one day. Um, but this is one that I ultimately sprung for because I mainly use a Mark series model in everything, um, whether it be VST plugins or um, fractal firmware, both for personal stuff and for um, other you know, other artists, but I use it for literally everything, whether it's classic rock, progression, or progressive, whatever, it just works. So, um, and I'm using 
a very similar model, actually the Mark IV model for a Southern Rock thing that I've, that I've been talking about forever. Um, but figure, I'll give you a little bit of a sneak peek of kind of what that is. Now my current Axfex patch, I run a um, pretty much setup just like this for my rhythm sound, except this is a super overdrive, but it's practically the same pedal. Um, lead channel on the Mark IV through this exact Boogie V30 cabinet with mixed with different microphones. So what I want to do is pull up my AX8 patch and dial in the exact values and see what it sounds like. Input drive is six and a half, so that's what I assume lead gain is. We'll call it there. That is where, yeah, Tim will be there, so we'll, we'll do it right there. Uh, we got treble at six, as you can back off on that when you're using pedals. 3.4 on mid, so we'll call it three and a half. Uh, bass, 2.5 roughly. Okay. Um, See, this has got an overdrive type thing too. Lead gain, lead drive. I'm assuming drive is overdrive. I don't know. <laughs> um, don't have the bright switch engaged, but I do have fat. So we'll pull fat, which um, a lot of people like fat for, for just um, leads alone, and I, I could definitely see their point, but for this it works really well. Um, I want to just change there. Master, yeah, probably want to keep that reasonable. That was 5.9, so basically 6. Of course, you can dial in stuff just so unreasonably <laughs> perfect on that. Uh, then presence at a 2. That pull shift, we don't need to do that. And we'll do the GEQ, which I find the, the graphic EQ on this is more powerful than it actually is on the amp. I think that's the negative 6 line, I'm pretty sure. Um, and then we've got a boost to 3 three on here and then a one which is right off center we'll call it and then that's right down off center there and then one is again right there so i've got a modified v-curve a little little stair steppy and this guitar is probably going to be out of tune as shit i'm using my uh gibson sgj with paf uh, ripoff humbuckers some good vintage stuff Maple neck, hoggy body, all that good stuff. So, yeah, let's try it out. Well, it definitely doesn't translate gain wise on this amp. Uh, are tapered differently on this than they are on the um, on the model so that probably is it's not going to be one for one on the game all right that's pretty much dead on I had to raise the the lead gain a lot but <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's it. Maybe the pedal needs more output too. That's that's possibly part of it. That sounds closer. Cause um, you know, the the boost on the pedal isn't gonna be like for like. So maybe that's it. Yeah, try that.
just go crazy with it. So uh, I got my Agile 8 string, Fortin 33 clean boost, and for some 8 string stuff, probably don't even need that, but I think this will just go to prove how freaking amazing this design is because it's ultimately based off of, you know, an, an initial amp design from the early 80s and it's still crushing. So um, let's get rid of that fat. I don't know, fat might sound good. had this amp for less than 30 minutes and I can already tell you that um, if, if there was one amp in the world that I had to have it'd probably be this one uh, holy shit it's it's one thing to play the digital model um, and kudos to fractal for getting it so close that I could just translate my settings to to the real deal and it works but I don't know there's just something savage something inherently um, primordial about interacting with the, the physical thing is just something something completely different so um, yeah I'm very happy with this and I can't wait to uh, make some legitimate videos about it because um, so many of my favorite guitar tones spawn from this from both players I enjoy um, as well as my own personal stuff so it'll be a lot of fun hope you enjoy this little behind the scenes screwing around and tell me your favorite uh, boogie mark settings and uh, which one is your favorite of the of the line just for just for fun see if you've been paying attention and stayed through the whole video if so you're a trooper thanks for watching stay tuned for better produced content than this garbage <laughs> bye